what's going on everybody dave lachran with odd shopper back again closing out week 13 coming off a strong sunday time to keep it rolling before we head into week 14 and we've got a a playoff implication game today i don't know i mean you got two teams in the nfc south the tampa bay bucks the new orleans saints listen these teams fighting for playoff spot to win the division potentially sub 500 it is what it is though right and somebody's got to make it right now bucks leading the division under 500 and the saints are four and eight if the saints win this game move to five and eight that would place the bucks at five and seven and now we've got a, a real race between them and the falcons and and the saints i mean look it's ugly but it doesn't matter because we all got the same bets to choose from we all got the same odds and we're going to figure something out today so hit that thumbs up subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below as well and let's dive into it all right first up it's an odd game for a couple of reasons one we're still waiting on marshawn Lattimore's status that's pretty big because this guy's just been able to completely not only limit but but almost erase mike evans in these games also, Tampa Bay losing right tackle Tristan Wirfs, I think is a huge deal in a spot like this because they've already had some issues on the offensive line. It hasn't really resulted in Tom Brady throwing a lot of interceptions, but you can tell the efficiency hasn't been there all year. He's struggled to put balls into the end zone. They've stalled out in the red zone all of the time this season. And now you're going to have it right tackle Josh Wells going up against uh, Cameron Jordan all night and it's likely not going to end well for them. So just pay attention, number one, to Marshawn Lattimore. And full disclosure, when we did this video on Friday, I do picks for every game heading into the week. We talked about this one. We grabbed the Saints at plus four. That has since moved to plus three. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. You know, if you can find some three and a halfs out there, I would definitely be looking to go there. But when you look at the game earlier this season, and we can get into a couple of things here. This game was 3-3 going into the fourth quarter, okay? That was with Jameis Winston at the helm in week two. Then Jameis Winston turned into Jameis Winston, started getting picked off a bunch, and it was the Tampa Bay defense that put the work in, got them this 20-10 to win. But ultimately, the Bucs just aren't playing good football. And how many times do we look at this game and go, you know, but they got to turn it around. They got to turn it around. It's the Bucs. It's Tom Brady. It's Godwin. It's, they got to turn it around. Look at this defense. We've seen them so many times in the past. Well, we're three quarters of the way into the season. And they still haven't turned it around. And now they're down their right tackle. And they got some injuries at the secondary as well. I'm not saying the Saints are juggernauts. They just got blanked last week. Sure, goal line fumble from Alvin Kamara and some other things went nasty. But 13-0 against the San Francisco 49ers. It's still a playoff implication game. It's still a divisional game. And one that I think stays competitive and low scoring. Not to mention... Tom Brady has really struggled since coming over the Bucs to face the New Orleans Saints. Uh, he actually has thrown more interceptions than touchdowns in these me meetings since he came over to Tampa Bay from, from New England. And that's before they had actual issues with the offensive line when this guy was actually protected. So with the Saints getting healthier on defense, I'm looking to lean plus three for New Orleans. Like I said, if we had it at four, I mean, if you got it at four earlier in the week, good for you. I think that's a great bet. Plus three is a little bit dicier, but I'd lean that over Tampa just because, and I'm not, I'm not betting the Saints to win here. I think it's a very competitive game. Low scoring one at that. We'll go Saints three. Now I have something on the total here as well. Before we do though, the DraftKings promo is back. And if you guys haven't collected your $150 in free bets, no better time to do so right now. And I will tell you why. It's not because you have Monday night football. It's because you can take college basketball and turn all of that into free money for professional NFL football. What do I mean? All right. All you have to do is use the link in the description or the one in the pinned comment. Take $5, not 10, 20, 30, 100, $5. Put it on any money line of any sport. And if that wins, you get 150. They might scratch your head and be like, well, Lafayette, that's not a no brainer. It kind of is when you have college basketball. You have massive money line favorites. Just look at tonight, minus 1,700, minus 2,000. Forget about the $5 you're putting down. That doesn't matter. Let that go into the ether or, of course, win the bet and collect a, a small amount on that. But you're still getting the payout on the $5, plus you're getting $150 in free bets to do whatever the hell you want with. Sportsbooks likely, most of the time, do not offer these type of offers throughout the season after football ends and after the, the first week or first month of football ends, 
you're taking advantage of one that's still here somehow. And if you're in Maryland that just opened sports betting, it's $200 in free bets. Five bucks. Use the link in the description. Put it on the biggest money line favorite you can win, uh, bet. And when they win, collect your free bets. Use it on whatever you want and run that bankroll up. All right, on to the total. I'm going under here. I think you guys probably already knew this. You're talking 41 and a half points right now. I mentioned earlier, 3-3 three, three game going into the fourth quarter earlier this season. That's only one game, okay? I understand that. But everything we've seen from Tampa's offense, and yes, I know they're getting healthier, but still, even when they've been mostly healthy on offense with the skill position, they still haven't been able to manufacture points. Tom Brady's having to throw a ton because they've had a completely stagnant run game. And then the Saints defense is getting healthier, especially if Marshawn Lattimore's back. The defensive line looks better. They have a real advantage there at right tackle with with uh, with with Cameron Jordan going up against Wells with Tristan Wurst out. This makes for a spot where you could see a slow, low-scoring game, a lot of incompletions, under 41 and a half. The Saints offense is, is, is regressing. The defense is getting better. The Tampa Bay Bucks have gone under in nine and of 11 games this season. And while New Orleans is six and six to the over, you have to look at what we've seen recently. This is not an offense that is able to trade blows with opposing teams right now. And it just looks like a game where we're going to lean under 41 and a half. And we'll close it out with a prop here. Not a ton of props. I was looking at total field goal props, trying to find, I couldn't find total field goals. If you can find one, hit me up on Twitter at Lafayette underscore D L O U G H Y underscore D. They might just not be posted yet. Cause I record this in the morning, but this to me feels like a game where you see, you know, some long field goal attempts, some Tampa Bay bucks stalling out in the red zone and, and a lot of opportunities to see, you know, uh, it soar over whatever the prop. Again, I don't know what it's going to be, but I'd love to get a look. So so hit me up if you find something. I'll keep a look out there the day. You can check our Discord as well. But I'm going Chris Godwin over 67 and a half receiving yards in this game. Minus 115 on DraftKings. Listen, he's averaging 10 targets per game since returning to action in week four. And I'm not even mentioning his target share because I think on a team that throws as much as the Bucks do, I'd rather look at raw targets over anything else. You can be like, oh, and, and he does have a nice target share. Don't get me wrong. But you, you can look at target share, and sometimes it can be misleading. If it's a, a team that doesn't throw a lot at all, like at all, you know, they just super run heavy, 29 pass attempts per game, a high target share could look better than a lower target share on the Bucks, where you're having Brady throw 46, 50 times per game. Shit, since week four when Mike Godwin or when Chris Godwin returned from injury and is averaging over 10 targets per game, Brady's throwing over 46 times per game in that span, which is an insane number. They have essentially no run game right now. Even if you get Fournette back and Rashad White has looked good, they still struggle to run the ball. And I'm also assuming that Marshawn Lattimore returns and just you know, has, has Mike, Mike Godwin in hell. And he's done that. How do I, Mike God, why do I keep calling him Mike Godwin? Has Mike Evans in hell uh, and takes a lot away from that. That makes Godwin even more, Chris Godwin, even more appealing. And even though it looks like Russell Gage should be back, it shouldn't take too much away from Godwin's target share. I mean, think about it. The Saints defense, like I said, they're getting better. They're getting healthier, but Godwin should be the focal point of this Bucks offense for Tom Brady, and I definitely like to get over 67 and a half there. Appreciate you guys watching. As always, hit the thumbs up, subscribe on the way out. Take advantage, $5 into 150 over at DraftKings. Bet a big money line favorite. Don't sweat it. Collect that win. Collect your money back and the 150 in free bets before this goes away. We'll see you back here for Thursday Night Football. Peace.